Hi, this is Kay from Clever Someday, and if you watch my video overviewing Cricut embossing, you know I promised you a tutorial on how to create your own embossing files. So here it is. If you didn't watch the overview video yet, then you will be totally lost, so I recommend you watch it first, then come back to this one. I mentioned in the first video that there was not a way to prepare the embossing files in Design Space alone, and that third-party software would be needed. The reason for this is that we need to do an inset of a specific dimension. Any vector design program can do this, but I find it very straightforward and sure cuts a lot for. The other challenge is holding the exact size when the SVG comes into Design Space. Again, this is an area where sure cuts a lot excels. If you are a seasoned user of another vector design program, you should be able to easily translate this process over to your software of choice. So here we are in sure cuts a lot with a brand new document open. The first thing you need to do is know the size of the card stock you're going to emboss. If you remember from my video, I did the topper to an A2 card, so I needed it to be 5.25 inches wide and 4 inches tall. And I'm going to color that white, although the color really doesn't matter. This is going to end up representing our card to be embossed. It's going to be a reference shape for us, and it actually can be a reference shape for the design process too. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring in my image to be embossed. I have my fish here already put in my Shortcuts A Lot library. You could import an SVG. You could bring in a bitmap and trace it. However you want, remember that it needs to be stencil friendly, meaning that there is no trapped white space. Now I need to size this so that it's appropriate for my card. And Shortcuts A Lot you want to hold down the shift key and drag so that it maintains the proportions. Or I can go over here to the size and position window and just type in my size. I think I'm going to want that about three inches tall, so I'm going to just type in three inches. And in my case, I'm going to want this centered on the card. So I'm going to select both and I'm going to go to Object, Align, Align Centers. Now I'm going to use a convention here where the cutting layer is red. So I'm going to change the fish to red. And now I'll zoom in so you can see what we're going to do next. Now the next thing I'm going to do is flip the fish. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're embossing from the back side of the paper. So if you want the fish, swimming to the left on your final piece. The fish has to be swimming to the right on your design. So to do that I'm going to go to Object, Transform, Flip Horizontal. This isn't so critical with images but obviously for text it's very important. So if you have text or whatever you want to be wrong reading in your design. I need to make the scoring layer to match the cut layer. So I'm going to duplicate the fish on top of itself. So I'm going to go to Edit copy, edit, paste in place. And now you'll see over in the layers panel that I have two copies stacked on top of each other. I'm going to change that top copy to blue, just blue as a convention for scoring so that I remember the difference. And I need to inset that. So I'm going to go to path, offset path, click inset offset, and then I'm going to change this number to 0 0.02. This number is critical. It's the amount of difference between the two layers that works best for the Cricut embossing stylus. So I'm going to click OK. Now you should see the red peeking out from behind the blue. The red that shows represents that difference of 0 0.02. One more thing I want to do is duplicate the blue layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the Cricut won't double cut on the accessory side even if double cut is selected. So if I want to double cut, I need two fish on top of each other. So I'm going to do the same as we did before, edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And now you see two blue copies on top of the red copy. This is everything we need. So we're going to go to File, Export, give our file a name, like Redfish, Bluefish. Pick a location and click Save. When we do that, we get another window. We want to be sure that the top two 
boxes are unchecked and the bottom box that says design space compatible is checked. This is a nice feature shortcuts a lot that's going to make sure that the SVG is ready for design space and at the correct size. So we're going to click OK. And I can peek down here and see the thumbnail and Dropbox shows me that saved correctly. And now I'm ready to go back to the design space. Okay, before I bring in my fish, I want to do one more thing in design space first, and that is to create my boundary shape that represents the maximum for print then cut. So I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to type in 6.75 by 9.25. And I'm going to set this to right. If you'll recall from the video, we use this to write on our stencil. So now I'm going to go upload my fish. Upload, upload image. I can either click browse and find it or I can drag and drop. I want to make sure and give it a nice descriptive name. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that for the video purposes, but you're going to want to be sure and have this tagged in a way that you'll be able to find it later. And I'm going to click Save. And now I'm ready to bring it into my document. Now with this selected, we can just verify our size, which is 5.25 by 4. Sure cuts a lot, brings it in the correct size, but you always want to double check. And if you were to use another program, you might have to change the size at this point. But it's absolutely critical that the SVG come in at the same size you designed it at, because if you change the size of the SVG, you change that 0 0.02 dimension, and then the embossing won't work. So let me zoom out a little bit here, and I'm just going to position this onto the inside of the boundary. I'm going to select all and center this horizontally. doesn't really have to be. And this can be anywhere inside the boundary. If you watch the video, you see that I need room for tape, and that's just for convenience that I put it at the bottom. If I wanted to emboss onto a folded card, I would have room to do that here. I can use the room at the top for something else. Lots of ways to do this. This is just how I chose to do it and seems to work best for me. But that position within the boundary is not critical. Now you will recall that the blue are going to be my scoring layer, so I'm going to go ahead and change those to score. And the red is going to be cut but it needs to be print then cut. So I need to change that to the printer icon. I also want this inner shape to be drawn. So I'm going to set it to right. And because this is my stencil layer, I can go ahead and turn off the scoring fish. And the next thing I want to do is select all and attach. I should be ready at this point to do my print and cut stencil. So we can just go ahead and click make it to verify that it looks correct. And it does. It looks very much like the stencil in the video if you watched. The one thing you might want to do is change the fish to a lighter color to save ink. So with my stencil section complete and verified, I'm now ready to duplicate this so that I can create my embossing side. Now on this copy we want to turn off the inner panel rectangle. We want to turn off or hide the cutting fish and we want to turn back on the two embossing layers. We need this to be a print and cut in order to generate the sensor marks but we're not actually going to print it and we're not actually going to cut it. But we're going to trick the Cricut into thinking we are. And to do that, we're going to select the large rectangle and we're going to set it to print. And we'll just use white for that, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we can check this layer too by clicking Make It. And we'll see the first mat's the same as it was before. The second mat has our sensor mark and our embossing. So that's correct. So now our file looks like the file in the walkthrough video, and the steps would be the same. You're going to run your first mat to print and cut a stencil. Then you're going to 
tape your cardstock over the stencil using that inner line as your guide. You're going to run it again with the second mat selected and no blade so that all it will do is score. The reason this works is because the sensor marks are identical on both passes so it puts the design in exactly the right place. I know this is a lot of steps. I know it's complicated. That's because Cricut Design Space is made to be simple and that's at the expense of flexibility. But when we're able to string together a bunch of different workarounds, we can really do some amazing things. I'm going to be providing some steps and some charts and things that are going to make this easier. I'm not saying this is for everybody. This is an advanced procedure and you're really going to only want to go to the work for this stencil for something that you want to do multiples of or something that's really important. But the key thing is that it's possible. It is an option. You can get great embossing from your Cricut if you follow these steps. Thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Follow my channel. Come by my blog, cleversomeday.com. Leave your questions either on YouTube or in the comments section of the blog. I'm looking forward to seeing what you make with this. And I really appreciate you watching.